Hi everybody, Scott here from the Introvert Power Channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to transform our thoughts and our feelings into words. Now, it's probably worth sort of putting out there at the start of the video, uh, just because of the nature of the video, to adopt a a self-reflective um, presence in the sense of you know, what is it that I'm noticing about my own thoughts and my own feelings um, as the video goes along. Now there's, um, there's a saying that the longest journey is from the head to the heart and I believe that is very true uh, for a lot of us. And some would say that that is the journey of life, is to get um, get back in touch with the heart, which I would say is really getting back in touch with uh, with the self. And I think that's an important uh, maybe point to make. Also, is we can over identify with our thoughts and our feelings um, in a negative way. It's almost like we can be fused to them. Um, and it's like what, what we're fused to, we're almost not aware of. And we can identify, a lot of people identify that their thoughts are the whole person or, or is the self. And I would suggest that thoughts are an aspect of self. So as the video goes along, I just encourage you to be just observe, uh, observing your thoughts and your feelings and um adopting a curiosity about them what is it that um, what is it that I'm thinking what is it that I'm feeling and I wonder why I'm feeling that where is that coming from so the, the sort of openness and I would suggest that um, we can share our thoughts and betray ourselves um, in the sense that if we're not feeling if we're, if our thoughts aren't connected to our feeling then what we share from our thoughts may only be a portion of the truth or a, uh, or a, an angle on what we want to say. Whereas when, we're, uh, when we are connected with our thoughts uh, and our feelings, when they're kind of um, uh, sort of in, in uh, unity, if you like, then the words that we speak are going to be uh, much more closer to coming from the from the self as opposed to a part of self. Um, so another way of putting it is we could share about a topic and it be kind of an angle or a style or a, a have aspects of truth. Um, but we could go a little deeper and actually start to feel about what we what we're thinking and then the 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 feeling actually informs the thoughts it actually influences the thought in in a sense might sound odd for some people but giving the thoughts clarity and it's almost like the the feeling part of the self um has its own thoughts about um uh, things, life, um, everything, and so when we're connected to those, uh, when the f when we're connected to those feelings, then what we share would could be almost the opposite or very different. At least the style or the feel of what we of what we speak would be very different um, after feeling about it. So if we look at it from one perspective, it's like we've got our thoughts in uh, you know at, at, in our head. And then we've got our feelings in our body, our feelings in our heart. And there's a sense of, if we're stuck in our head, then the, the journey to um, feeling is by observing and noticing what's happening in the body, whether it's sensations, um, uh, feelings in the body, various parts of the body could be experiencing or feeling something. And... Um, there's a, a, a saying, and there's actually a book that's been written on it, called uh, The Body Remembers. And it's that our, our, our bodies also remember events. You know, our head can have, a, have, um, have memory, if you like, of, of events in our lives, um, or even thoughts about what, uh, what's going on currently. 
but our body also remembers and feels about what's happening. So the journey from the head to the heart essentially is by allowing the body to be felt, um, to, to, to listen to it, to notice what's going on in it. And it could just be feeling an anxiety. And if that's kind of the, the, the most clearest, if you like, um, emotion that's being felt, then it's a really good idea to sit with that anxiety to get inside it in the sense of what's underneath it, what's behind it, what's driving it. And uh, we can go into that in, a more, in more detail later. But So the general process I want to go through today is if we're stuck in our head, uh, we need to um, allow ourselves to notice what's happening in the body, to feel what's happening and allow that to emerge. And then the next step is to allow that to be felt in the sense of just just observing it, being curious about it, letting it happen, and that as we process and feel those feelings and sensations, clarity will emerge about what they are about, and then that will inform the thoughts. And then we'll, we'll start having some unique thoughts about what, what it is that we're feeling or what it is that we want to say, and then we can go ahead and uh, speak that truth out. Um, the other way I want to explore this video is that we have um, there's lots of ways of using a lot, a lot of language that we can use to describe this, but generally speaking for this video, we'll sort of say that there's self, and that's where we want to be living from. Then we can have our thoughts uh, and our feelings um, underneath that, and we want to sort of be coming from here, noticing what's happening um, in our thoughts and our feelings. And then, then when we are observing and noticing these things, that will then inform, like the, the self will kind of just start to know what is what is going on. It's it's like it knows what's happening in a sense. Um, uh, but we've got to kind of get back there in order to observe, and we can get back there by essentially observing what our thoughts are what our feelings are at any given time. So like I said before, we can actually over-identify with our thoughts and it's important to recognize that they are only thoughts. And we can have lots of, many, many hundreds and thousands of thoughts every day. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's the self. So a way of getting out of that place is observing the thoughts as opposed to over identifying with them so we we start to it's like that mindfulness we start to become aware of of the thoughts and we can even write the thoughts down uh, sometimes it's helpful to get them on paper and then we can observe the thought on paper and start to get a different perspective on them and in regards to our feelings we can also be stuck or over identifying in feeling and I think well, two ways I want to mention in this video. One is that we can be um, we can be busy trying to not feel um, what's going on, and that sure could be us sort of getting lost in our head, but it also could be us sort of being in an, in a, an emotional fog, um, not really knowing what's going on, um, sort of like a numbness. Uh, the other way is um, where we're um, overly connected to a feeling to the point that we don't even know that we are so we could be you know we can if we grow up with an anxiety um, sort of an underlying anxiety um, birthed out of childhood then um, we we probably don't even know we we are it's, it's that anxiety becomes normal um, and so some of I, I think life's journey gives us opportunities to recognize those things and it's important when those come around that we um, we we judge of that as essentially to start to to um, get some distance. It's like in order to address the anxiety, we've got to disconnect from it. We've got to we've got to sort of it's like an enmeshment. We've got to kind of step away from it so that we can start to observe this anxiety, not as who we are and as self, but as a part of us that is there that needs to be um, acknowledged and noticed and, um, and the way into that essentially is to sort of allow yourself to feel the anxiety, helps to process the anxiety, helps to reduce the anxiety and then we can, we can start to get some, um, some clarity 
into what the anxiety is about. So a really helpful um, therapeutic technique for um, beginning to become self-aware and to be noticing thoughts, to be noticing feelings, um, and to be um, observing them and so on, is called internal family systems. And uh, I won't go into that in a lot of detail in this video, but I'd certainly recommend um, uh, Googling that. And there's a lot of good books on the topic. But essentially, Internal Family Systems looks at that within, within us, we have lots of parts. Um, we have protector parts that are there to protect us from parts of ourselves that we've exiled, that we've either disconnected from or trying to shove down. And then we can develop sort of ways of protecting ourselves from feeling that exiled part or um, trying to protect ourselves from others recognizing it because we don't want to refeel it. And essentially, one of the keys to, to, the, to the reconnection of thoughts and feelings in the sense of you know, reconnecting them and becoming aware of, of what is going on on a deeper level is to sort of make a decision to be open to whatever is is happening within um, you know and not judging it it's not good bad it, it just is for right now and let's just notice what that is and what we can notice what what can happen when we start that process is we become aware or we can become aware of parts of ourselves that are judging um, uh, other parts of ourselves, like if we if we're shy and we got uh, teased for being shy, then we can create a part that in inside ourselves that's antagonistic and shaming towards the shy part um, because of the the pain that's been experienced. However, that critical part is also bringing on pain. So it's important to then get some distance. Uh, it's like you step back and start to observe the critic because sometimes we can be, you know, we can observe ourselves being negative towards ourselves thinking that it, it's myself being negative towards another part of me, so that must be okay. Um, but if we start to observe the negativity, then we recognize that that's not self either and uh, it, it's just another sort of developed part of ourselves that we then need to kind of be empathetic towards, you know, caring about the critical part, you know, because it's also trying to help the system, you know, because if we can sh successfully shut down the shy part through this critical part, then maybe we'll have some peace. But the idea is that the self observes both the critical part and the shy part and has room for both to care for them and, um, and sort of reintegrate them back into self. Now, there's a huge, that, that's a, a big, big talk, uh, topic, but um, just to sort of throw out some of the ideas and the concepts. In fact, I, I have made a, a video, uh, and I'm pretty sure it, it goes into um, uh, the, the internal family systems um, in a bit more detail, and it's called Embracing, uh, How to Embrace Your Sensitivity, I think it's called, and I'll just leave a link somewhere here for you to click on that if you, if you want to look at that video. Another um, another resource that I have is uh, a, th a three part series on um, how to in connect with um, you know the inner child essentially is another way of describing all of this. So how do we connect with our ourselves? Um, so there's a three part series. I'll leave a link somewhere either on the screen or in the description, and that's called how to look after my mini me. So how to how to connect and look after that part of ourselves. And in a way, we could say that the mini-me is uh, the, um, the exiles and the protectors. It's like the, the childhood, it, it's way, the way in which we've tried to protect ourselves um, uh, through childhood. And then in adulthood, it's like we need to start to recognize how we've set that up and start to um, find better ways of looking after the self. So again, if we're stuck in our thoughts, we need to observe the body, and if we're stuck in our feeling, we need to start to observe what it is that we're feeling or not feeling to gain some perspective on the feeling so that we can feel it. And um, that's essentially the next step, is we just allow ourselves, we give ourselves space to simply feel what is happening. 
And another uh, um, uh, concept to put out there is that often we try to, our thoughts try to analyze what's going on. Uh, and that's a real uh, uh, sort of a trap or a vulnerability is that we can start to try to the moment we start to feel something, our thoughts want to kind of get in and start to interpret, analyze, and figure it out. And that's a trap in a sense because the thoughts, the, the thought process generally tries to get us, it moves us away from feeling it. Um, it's almost trying to help us to not feel it, to re shut it down. So when we start to become aware of that, we simply just put those, um, we, it's almost like we ask the, the thinking part of us, if you like, you know, I recognize you, are you able to just step aside for a moment while we allow ourselves to feel this feeling? Uh, so, so like I said, f feelings try to interpret and they actually move us away from a, um, accurate interpretation, if you like, because it's the feeling of the feeling that interprets itself, so to speak, like it by feeling it, we actually connect with what it's about and it kind of releases, we get a deeper insight or, or knowing about what it is. And then that, that will just emerge into the thoughts. And then we start to get a fresh perspective on what it is that is going on for us. And then from there, uh, we, we can, um, we're better equipped at least to, to communicate that. But I'll get into sort of the communication of this um, uh, in a minute and a way to stay in that space of just feeling as opposed to analyzing is uh, to adopt a curiosity it's like a key component of self is being curious and not non-judgmental towards this towards whatever is happening and that allows sort of the deeper parts to begin excuse me begin to emerge so that we can recognize them and it can also be helpful, and um, my articles address this, at ways that we can actually engage openly with these parts of us that we start to feel or memories that we start to, to notice. Um, it's like we, it's almost like when we become aware of a feeling, um, we, we adopt a curiosity to to that feeling in the sense of we just be open to what it is rather than trying to interpret what it is. And then from there, we're um, able to be sort of asking a question. It's almost like it, we see it as a separate being almost. Now, I'm not talking about DID or alters or anything like that. It's just a way or language that helps us to gain a perspective on parts of ourselves so we can see it almost like it's a separate part of us, like a separate being with its own reality. And we can ask it what, um, um, we can welcome it. We can say, it's okay, you're, at, we're, you're welcome to, to be here. Um, um, we can be asking it, um, what does it want to say? Uh, uh, where has it come from? What does it need? All of these sorts of um uh, non-judgmental, caring, empathetic questions to allow this part to sort of untangle itself and to become more uh, um, present, and uh, for us, and that enables us to understand it at a deeper level. Now, this is a process um, that uh, can take quite a while to. I mean, I think it's a lifelong journey in one respect, but developing the skills and the self-awareness to a level where we can simply be in the moment going, hang on, I'm feeling something. What is it that I'm feeling? Okay, that's what's going on. All right, now I need to communicate that. That sort of more on the spot sharing. Um, for some people, that could take quite a while to, to get to that place. Uh, and I guess I just put that out there to that this is not like a one-time event or a one-time strategy. This is more like a lifestyle. Um, and that, it, you know, could just sort of chalk it up to maybe a couple of years of of um, of practicing this before it becomes a bit more second nature. For others, it might be a, a lot quicker than that. But I think for, for, you know, if you sort of have a mindset of a couple of years, then it gives you some breathing space to sort of go this journey. Um, 
Now, in regards to sort of sharing these thoughts and feelings, that the process that I've just outlined needs to take place and needs to be there um, before, uh, um, in a sense, before we can communicate it. However, that process often requires um, sharing to get to that place in the sense of sometimes we need an, a, another person to be able to sort of be debriefing with, to be sharing, to be um, uh, you know, a safe person that we can be sharing these things with and, um, and, and doing this process with. So for instance, with the, the thought, the person stuck in thoughts and needing to get back to feelings, um, uh, so, sorry, when a person is st stuck in their thoughts and needs to reconnect with their feelings, it's helpful to have someone to sort of bounce that off with. And, you know, when you start to feel something, you can start to talk about it. And, uh, and, and it seems as though having another person in involved helps to, can help for, that it is almost like it creates a mirror for the person doing the work to see themselves more clearly. Uh, sometimes it can be really hard doing this in isolation. At least initially, doing it on on one's own could be um, tricky. Um, it's, sometimes it's helpful to have somebody to sort of bounce this off with to help gain some some perspective. So when it comes to the other person and communicating what it is that we know, uh, it's important that we recognise where we are in that in that relationship or where we are in that connection in the sense of, you know, is there a meshment in, in the relationship um, that needs to be sort of pulled apart so that we can have clarity about what's going on for us as individuals. So that's essentially what's happening in the whole process that I've just outlined is, is sort of, um, you know, dealing with that enmeshment in the self to gain clarity. Part of that journey will be um, dealing with any enmeshment in our relationships. It's almost like it goes hand in hand. So part of that is being able to know where I start and end and where the other person starts and ends. And is there an enmeshment that, that is kind of creating confusion about whose feelings are whose and you know th that sort of thing. So, so this video hasn't really, been, it's not an MBTI video, but to sort of bring some of the MBTI concepts in, Someone um, with extroverted feeling would pro may find this uh, challenging uh, and a necessary process to be able to disconnect from, uh, uh, not sort of in a sense disconnect from the other, so that the the extroverted feeling person is able to get some perspective on what it is that they feel, because often that extroverted feeling is sort of very aware of of the other. So creating that awareness, almost like a conscious decision to go, okay, what, what am I noticing in, in within myself that's actually the other person's, and and myself and and mine, and um, and and we can sort of practice going, okay, that's I'm I'm carrying their fear, all right, so I need to that's not my issue, so I need to give that back to them, and now this is another uh, quite in depth process, but the, the general idea is to start to recognize what I'm carrying that's actually the other person's and give that back to them. And that can just be a decision or a boundary that we say to ourselves, I'm going to hand that back to them. And that can create some clarity as to what it is that I'm feeling. So um, this process can often go hand in hand with the, the um, work that I've just described, uh, described throughout this video. With, with someone with introverted feeling, the, their, their struggle can often be um, uh, finding the words, well, finding room to actually be able to find the words to communicate what it is that they want to say. Because there's so much going on, there's so much in there, and there's so many angles to everything that there needs to be a lot of patience and room for the, um, from the other person to give um, the introverted feeler uh, space to be able to uh, communicate what it is that they're feeling or what it is that they're thinking. 
So often patience and room is a, is a key component. And it's really important for an introverted feeler to ask for that. Because um, oftentimes the other person isn't even aware that they need it. Um, so asking for it is, can sort of create a boundary around the self, if you like, that enables the introverted feeler to, to communicate uh, and get out whatever it is that they that, that's within them. And the, the the other way through all of this process is that the the good news, in a sense, is that we can start anywhere with this process. Like I was saying before, with um, noticing an anxiety, that if that's what's there, that's that's fine in the sense of let's just start feeling the anxiety, noticing it, not rejecting it, because then it then it grows and gets bigger. Let's just feel that. And then once that anxiety starts to reduce, uh, we'll start to become aware of other things. Other things will start to come up. And um, so in regards to the work, it's like just we just start with what is there. And then as we open ourselves up to that process, more and more will be revealed from within. And this is true in regards to communicating with the other person or other people. If, if we're, we're struggling to find the words and we don't know how to sort of begin, we, we can just start with, uh, with, 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 in a sense, from anywhere or anything. And a common one is like, I don't know what, what to say or I don't know how to say it. Then we can start to talk about that. You know, we can, let's, talk about the, let's talk about the fact that I'm not sure how to communicate or I'm not sure what to say or how to say it. Like, let's, let's begin communication about that. And then that will lead to um, more of the why and um, more insight as we sort of just begin to uh, um, sort of open things up. So I hope that that is a helpful video, and I just want to point out that this was a uh, a general topic that a subscriber uh, sent to me, and so hopefully that address this addresses in some way um, uh, what they were wanting uh, from this video. I hope all of you have got something out of the video. I appreciate it if you like the video that you'd share the video, and stay tuned for more videos. Um, there should be more to come, and um, uh, I will see you in another video. For those of you that may not be aware, I am a counsellor myself, so I'm certainly available um, to do uh, counselling with anyone that might you know, get the sense that I might be able to help with this process. Otherwise, you know, if you have people in your life that you can do this work with, then all, by all means, go, go, and um, go forth and feel, so to speak, and uh, and uh, and I just um, encourage uh, people to take on this journey. And uh, feel free to leave comments about uh, what you found helpful from this video. Uh, it's really good to, uh, to get feedback from um, from uh, from you guys. And uh, or you know share you know your experience of this sort of journey. It'd be great to hear from you.